fly also. What's up, TFOs? We're back. It's Charlotte Soccer Show yet again. I'm telling y'all, it doesn't stop. It just doesn't stop on Charlotte Soccer Show. We love this club. We love this city. We love this sport. I should say clubs uh, because we just put a bunch of independence preview stuff on the feed. We got a Carolina core season preview. We got a huge pregame live show coming up for the Crown Legacy on Sunday. So just doesn't stop on Charlotte Soccer Show. And uh you might notice, you may strategically have noticed the lack of a uh, any type of subscription fee or give us money or whatever. We go get money from Hotfly. Hotfly pays us so we can bring the content to you. That's how it works here. We don't charge our audience for content. That's crazy. Uh, but maybe someday we will. Uh, doubtful, though. I am here in Nashville. I'm the reconnaissance mission getting ready for the uh, Nashville SC match. I think we're going to win. I can't wait. Had a great interview earlier today with Jaleel Anababa. He's going to be on the call for Apple Season Pass. And uh, he's an awesome guy. Make sure you check that out on the channel. And uh, just thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you want to help us out, just please click like on all these videos. Like, I know it only seems like a big thing, and I'm not the type to brag for it. In fact, I talk about how I don't brag for uh, don't ask for likes. But today I'm going to do it because I was talking to a friend the other day, and he said, hey, man, you got a lot of uh, – People checking out your shit, but nobody clicks like. What's the deal? And it's like, hey, I don't know. I maybe I should ask him. So if you like what we do, just click like. It means some it doesn't really help. It doesn't, we don't get anything off of it. It just feels good. So yeah, take the time. So anyway, um, I just want to say it's time to decode the presser, y'all. We're back. Dino spoke today. Uh, let's get right into it because I've already wasted way too much time with the preliminaries. Let's uh, hear from Dino ahead of the match against Nashville. Um, Dino, can't wait to see you when you get here, man. What can you tell us about availability this week? Um, uh, Enzo Capetti's got a tight hamstring, so we'll have a look at him tomorrow um, to make sure, see if he's okay or not. Other than that, Diani's available for selection. He's um, trained all week with us, um, and Lil is still waiting for his, uh, his visa. Uh, so I think he plays international next week. Do you think he'll be... Ready to roll for the 30th? Yeah, I believe he will be. Yeah. All right. So right out, we get availability questions. That's huge. Uh, you, it's good to know, like, that people care, that people want to know who's available. Obviously, we got the sort of breaking news that came out on Wednesday. Johnny Hayes was at training, killing the training day reports. Uh, first person out there to note that Enzo was not around. Uh, I think actually Claudio Bonus also was probably the very first, but John and John and Claudio were both kind of uh, breaking that story in two different languages. So glad that it was the first question asked here of Dino. He's a little bit uh, coy. He just mentions the tight hamstring, doesn't really go into any detail. Nothing new on Abada. We kind of figured the 30th at the earliest for him. So let's see if anybody asks Dean to uh, speak a little more about that Enzo Capetti hamstring. What do you think? In terms of if Capetti can't go, how do you guys, whether that's going on, assuming that means Patrick would move into his slot? Of did ask. Yeah, we've got a couple of options. Um, you know, Patrick, obviously, um, he's the natural go-to. Uh, Scotty Arfield has played there before. Um, you, Yuri Tar Tavares has played there before. So we've got a number of, you know, diff different options. Kerwin Vargas has played there. We saw in Portugal as well, so there's a little bit of different options for us. In terms of this, let me just say right there, <laughs> Scotty Arfield, false nine. I'm so fucking here for it. Second halves, you mentioned it after the game against. I Toronto. think it'll be Patrick starting though. How do you go about simulating that in training? Is that a fitness thing? Is that a focus thing? How do you do that? Second no, half, nothing to do with fitness at all. And having reviewed the game and reflected on the game again, I'm. Just... Probably a little bit harsh on the players. Um, I watched it back and I thought we were good. Uh, you know, I look back on the three games on reflection. We probably should have won all three. Um, <laughs> probably slightly disappointed that we ha we haven't. But you know, the only reason that we got beat on Saturday was in senior. Um, You know, there's probably only a handful of players in this league who could have scored that goal at that moment. Um, and he was one of them, unfortunately. And that's why he gets paid so much money at Toronto. Um, you know, and that was unfortunately the reason we lost. Uh, tactically, I thought we played a really good game. We made them play where we wanted to. Um, 
Pally's not had to make many saves or be diving around his goal at all. Um, you know, so I was probably, you know, that's probably the most pleased I've been in, in terms of performance, but really disappointed that it didn't result in a, in a win. Nashville is heavily rotated. A little bit tired, I will admit. I'm a little bit tired of the, oh, man, the only way we could have lost was that Insigne wonder goal, you know what I mean? You know, you could have not lost by actually finishing your chances, and I'm sure Dino knows that. But I do agree with him that it's a little bit feels kind of disappointing to not be three and zero because felt like we should have won all these games. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. I do agree. I watched back. I think anybody that watched back kind of saw that uh, Charlotte FC looked really good, and uh, we held Toronto to a very low XG number, and it just. We got the UG, the UG, the unexpected goal. Uh, so uh, that that goes sometimes, but uh, let's see what's next for Dino. Their squads in their first three MLS games because of the cop cap uh, competition. I know you mostly focus on yourselves, but how much more difficult does that make them to prepare for? I don't know. I mean, I watched the game last night and I watched the game last week against Miami. Um, I thought they played really well second half last night. Um, you know. But unfortunately for them, there were two goals down at that time. Um, but they've rotated what looks a strong squad. I think they've worked really hard and they worked extremely hard for, for Gary last night as well. Um, you know, whether the amount of games they played um, in this short period uh, is a hindrance to them, I don't know. Um, you know, but I think they've got some really good players. And, you know, uh, they were unfortunate, you know, to go out, but you know, Messi as at his imperious best, scoring a good goal and creating another one. Um, so it was really tough for them. The last one for me is I got that as a little bit of a political answer from Dino. I mean, I know you never want to like give your opponent bulletin board material, but I don't know. They had a lot of good players and oh uh, you know, come on. We get it, Dino. Tell us something a little bit more specific, please. We saw the fullbacks play a lot differently under the previous management style. I know you're not necessarily inclined to talk more about that but what have you done with them to kind of instill your playing style your game model with them which is so drastically different than what they did a year ago i think the easiest thing for me and it was always going to be was to get some organization and, and stop conceding big chances um you know we were conceding too many big chances towards the end of games last season i think we look really good defensively without the ball um you know but I always felt that. Okay, so this is a small thing, but I actually just want to stop this here because I love this. This is like a small, but you, you when we're talking about decoding, when we're talking about like figuring out what's really being said, you got to listen between the lines. And what he just said there is, we lost a lot of games late last year. So he wasn't here. There is no we there. Dean Smith didn't lose any of those points last year. He didn't drop any of those points. He wasn't the one surrendering those late goals. But the fact that internally he didn't even think about it. There was no subconscious like, Oh, they, he said, we, he's all in. And so like just one simple word choice and it's and the fact that it wasn't a choice, the fact that it's like his subconscious just saying we, even when he's referring to a time that's not here, man, that is all in. Dean Smith is our fucking manager. In a short amount of time, you know, but as you're building, the hardest thing as we saw last week is, is to score goals. Um, that's why, you know, players that score goals cost more money than anybody else. Um, so that's, you know, the stage of where we're at and, and working to to strengthen our roster. You know, it's, it's certainly them them areas to get more goal opportunities. Cheers, Steve. Hey, just to quickly follow Goldberg that, time, let's um, go. The, the goals being given up late last year, what did that have to do with fatigue at the end of the game? Steve, he just answered he this. Come on, man. The defense to move up and offense that put them, you know, tucked it back. What, what do you think it was? It's hard for me because obviously I wasn't here. Um, you know, it just it, it looked like they were very <laughs> man orientated, and, and because of that, you know, gaps can appear. You know, spaces can appear because people can take you for a walk um, if you're following them, and you know, where people can then go and use them gaps. You know, we're, we're less man orientated this season. Yeah, other questions. Like, so this is my request. This is just my request to all my friends. I love seeing you guys whenever we show up all of the media stuff together. This is not – let's all move on. Let's collectively go. We're going to stop asking about last year. You know, We're just going to stop asking about the difference from last year to this year. You can see, like like when, when Dean was talking about the team, he's like, you know, we lost a lot of teams last year, lost a lot of points last year late, like I just highlighted there. 
that's one thing because he brought it up and it, it revealed that he's thinking in terms of we and not they. But then to like when you then you see when like the question is phrased in terms of like, hey, when the team gave up all those points last year, then he immediately is like, well, I wasn't here. So I just I've seen this a lot. I get it. But we are about to be, you know, four games more than a month into the season. So let's start talking more about this year than last year. Switching on, say, uh, Patrick for an end zone. Uh, Oh, this is change this is the good things? stuff, Steve. This I mean, is what we're waiting for. Players are going to have different, you know, advantages and, and, and disadvantages to themselves. Does that change things tactically? Like when you have to change a player out like that, do you adapt to that player? Um, you can do at times, but you know, from what we've been doing in preseason, and we're only three games into the season, we, you know, uh, Patrick and Enzo were sharing the load in terms of the games, the game time they played, and the way we were playing. So. Patrick understands how we were playing. Unfortunately, he got he was out for the first game with an injury. Um, but you know, I always look at, at players who you know, and then and, and look and think as a as a centre back, would I've liked to play against Patrick? And the answer is certainly no. Um, you know, he's one of them athletes, footballers who you know he can hurt a defender without actually knowing he's hurt them. Um, you know, he's got really long levers and, you know, as long as he, we direct him and work him to use them in, um, you know, the right way, I think he can be a real asset for us. Yeah, his speed is deceptive with his long stride and stuff to where he kind of just... Yeah, and, you know, he'll, he'll, he can run in behind, he, he can play up to feet as well. So, you know, he has a lot of similarities to Enzo, um, you know, probably... Uh, one of the strengths he's got is obviously his height as well. And there's a lot, I mean, consistency when it's working is, is a good thing. You've gone with the same lineup. How close have other players come to, you know, making, you know, giving you a, a reason to change that lineup to work their way into the first 11? I mean, if you look at our, our bench at the moment, there's been a back four on the bench and our back four have been quite good. Um, I think they've defended really well. Um, but there's a few times against Vancouver where we didn't defend defend the long ball well enough. Last week, I thought they were excellent. So it's been really tough, you know, for them four defenders on the bench to get in. Um, you know, as I said, that next step is the, the creation. So, you know, then the players, you know, who have been on the bench have got to be showing me now that they're better than the ones that are playing. So, you know, that's their, that's their challenge, you know, I, I put on them to, to show me during the week. Very interesting. Love hearing Dean talk about Patrick. I, I can't see any way Patrick is not the starter in place of Enzo. I know he te he mentioned Arfield, mentioned Yuri, mentioned Kerwin. I just think it's got to be Patrick. If he's healthy, please, please, Dino, start Patrick. We all want to see Pat start. Um, would be great to get uh, some news uh, if, if Enzo actually travels, but I don't think he's going to. We'll see. Dean's been playing at Coy. Let's see if anyone keeps the follow-up here. And I also like his comments there about, you know, we have a back four on the field and we have a back four on the bench. So it'd be nice to get a few more offensive subs uh, maybe maybe onto that bench as well as uh, some guys like Cambridge start coming back from injury for sure. They've been rising to it. I mean, making... Yeah, no, the, the, the training, the training uh, quality has been very good. The standards have been good and that's being pushed by everyone. Right. Thank you. No worries. Thank you. Um, Love it. Enzo Cope, Steve, you're the man. Uh, is a player that from a fan base perspective has gotten criticized a lot in the past you know, the 1v1 this weekend, um, I guess something that gets talked about a lot, maybe not the other parts of his game, but now that he's picked up an injury, what kind of conversations do, ha do you have with a player that may have, that may be getting some negativity from, you know, the fan base and now he won't be playing due to an injury? Um, reaffirm what we do here and how we look after each other um we see he certainly won't be getting any criticism from us and if he is reading criticism tell him not to it's quite a simple fix um you know what people won't talk about is the run they made where you know he almost drew a penalty from the goalkeeper the touch he made to to give himself that opportunity from westy's pass um the selfless running he, he also does as well you know I look at the chance he had last week and, you know, the keeper's guessed well, made a good save. Could he have done better? Yeah. You know, um, he could have gone across the goalkeeper. He chose to go that side, you know, but there's other people on the pitch that actually could have got the rebound as well, which, you know, if we end up scoring from the rebound from the goalkeeper, nobody's actually, 
you know, talking about Enzo missing that chance. So there's many things that, you know, add up to a performance and, and, and getting goals. Nice. And then I think you mentioned. Absolutely love this from Dean. Just going to bat for his striker. Not going to tolerate any talk of ah, nah, 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 Enzo. Like, in fact, even going so far as to saying, why didn't anybody score the rebound off Enzo's miss after it was saved? Like, Dino, if you remember in the preseason, he said, yes, Enzo and Carol Swiderski are designated players, but they're not my designated players. They're not the guys I chose. So knowing that we went from that, of, you know, two months ago, Swiderski out the door, Enzo's still here, and now here's Dean just, like, giving a very, very strong defensive Enzo, you know, and saying, like, hey, we're not criticizing him, and if he's reading criticism, stop reading it because we think he's doing fine. Again, I, I – you can tell very much from Dino that like scoring goals is important and Enzo has to finish chances. But and I always say Enzo's paid to score goals. I'm not so sure if Dino agrees. I think for him, Enzo's paid to be that that presser up at the top of the defensive press, you know, uh, in the uh, opponent's defensive zone. And I, I know he wants the goals, but I'm sure Dino's very, very happy with Enzo's work. And maybe he has become the designated player that uh, the Dino is happy to have. Who knows? In the last press conference where, you know, the team really hasn't, hasn't had an opportunity when they were down maybe a goal and you kind of had that opportunity this week and although it was minute 80 when they scored what what did you assess from your team that last portion of the game where you were down one nil well to be honest uh, I think the last 10 minutes was actually played in their half um you know uh, Patrick was on the pitch I felt we didn't hit him quick enough because I felt that we could have used his physical presence and played off him a little bit um so yeah, it was it was ten minutes and he was tough and you know I I feel that already in just two games we could have got more points on the on the road. Uh, I've been told how difficult difficult it is to travel and get points, but I've not seen that. Um, I've been told about the atmospheres when you go to you know opponents. I feel that the two games we played, their fans have been pretty quiet apart from when Insignia scored last week. So. Uh, we've done our job in in keeping crowds quiet, and um, it's certainly not not been any any anywhere near the atmosphere that we create at, at the Bank of America. Thank you. Thank you. All right, but John, we need a sub goal. Dino, right there, he just said, "Somebody, please score a sub goal." It's been three matches. I need to see a sub goal happen, and I'm making the subs. So you guys, please go score for me. I would uh, really appreciate it. I'm in love with Caleb. Like a beautiful silence. Sorry, a beautiful silence. A beautiful silence. <laughs> Hey, uh, you mentioned that so has a tight hamstring and you're going to take a look at him tomorrow. What does that mean exactly? It means that he's just feeling a tightness in his hamstring. And the worry then is if he if he runs, then he could actually, you know, cause some damage. So we'll just wait and wait and see. Um, you know, he'll, he'll be getting some soft tissue stuff done and the medical team will tell us tomorrow morning whether they think he can train or not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Uh, and then... As far as uh, Patrick, his impact off the bench in the last two. Shout out Johnny Hayes. That's you can hear you you know that voice if you're a fan of this show, this channel. That's Johnny Hayes asking questions. Johnny was there with Dino today. Love. The, I mean, why why does it take until we get you know five guys deep in the presser for Johnny Hayes to to re hit him on Enzo's tightness? That that was interesting. I do agree. I think Dino playing a little bit coy there, maybe a little gamesmanship, not ruling him out. Not ruling Enzo out, but I think if you miss training on Wednesday and Thursday, um, you're probably not going to be playing on Saturday. It's just kind of the way MLS works. Could be wrong, but that's my take. Matches. It feels like it hasn't been great. Have you talked to him about his performances and what do you expect on Saturday? Uh, I, th I think he's tough. He's, he's come back from an injury. Um, you know, he came on against Vancouver and had the one big chance from the header uh, where he just didn't quite connect it well enough. Um you know, last week, I think he got 25 minutes. You know, we put a ball, two balls down the side. He won a corner with one and he won a free kick in the corner with the other. Um, I, you, I didn't feel that we probably played two strengths as much as we could have. Um, but I have no doubts if I have to put him in there that he can, he can perform. Uh, corners. That put that I know that question had to pain Johnny. I know that Johnny had to feel the pain asking that question because he's a bigger Patrick Rajamong fan than I am. And he uh you know had to put Patrick a little on blast there. And yet again, there's Dean defending him. I like I like the the theme we're seeing here is Dino defending his players. It's not bad. Like if you when you think about what we've been used to with uh with Larry and the other guy, uh you always talk about how we're 
estamos oridos and uh, you know blah 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 i don't have the players we're not real madrid so um god it's such a beautiful thing just to see like there may come a point someday where i get sick of it i'm like god damn it dean why are you defending these guys they're sucking but i don't i hope we never get there cuz uh i really really love the way that dino just like is not going to let anything in the press conference. He's never going to like, from what I can tell, he is not going to allow, he's not one of those coaches that's like speaks to his players through the media. Like he's here, he's more kind of like, you know, circle the wagons. It's him and the players against all of us. So uh, that's fine. Well, you know, we're adversarial, but remember, Charlotte Sox show, we're just fanalists, bro. We're, we're not here, here trying to uh, become, uh, you know, the freaking Associated Press. We're just uh, having fun covering a soccer team. Against Toronto, a lot of service into the box. So definitely have to talk about set pieces with the yeah, the big time. And I thought our delivery was really good. We were we were inches away from scoring from a couple. You know, I, I thought away. Junior's header had gone in third minute. Brett had a, did, a great chance where I think it just got a touch off their lad's head in the second half, where it, it would have been a big chance as well. So I think we're causing real big. Big problems to the opposition from set pieces at the moment. At the moment, and you know Jerry's—I call him Jerry because I can't pronounce his name properly. But he's um, he's uh, his free kick was very close as well. Yeah, I mean, he's fantastic. Last one you, you talked about having. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of insightful. He can't pronounce Yere, so he just calls him Jerry. You know, hey, like Jerry. Uh, that's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> I agree. It'd be nice to see a set piece goal. And Dino didn't even mention the the privet chance or the the hop, skip, and a jump triple header uh, chance that Enzo had uh, put on goal as well. So, yeah, I think a sub goal is coming, like I said earlier. And I think a set piece goal uh, has got to be coming very soon. With center back, Enzo being a left footed uh, midfielder, and Diani. What does it mean to you to have you know that, like, that piece in the squad, left footer in that position? Why are you so uh, adamant about that? Adamant? I just think it gives you balance. I like balancing the team. I like to look at my team and see that it's got balance. Um, you know, if it's got balance, then I think all sides of it, you, you can actually go on the outside or inside a team. Um, so it's it's really important for me that that we have that. Um, but Gianni himself, a good physical player as well. Um, you know, he's got a really good habit of looking to pass forward when he receives it, and he receives it really well. Got really good receiving skills. So really looking forward to to having him as part of our squad. Thanks. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah, this height shouldn't make a difference. Yeah, yeah, I'm really looking forward to see what Jabril can bring as well. It's interesting. I don't know. They've mentioned his name a couple of times in this press conference. They keep saying available to, to debut, available to debut. Do we think there's a chance Jabril could start maybe over Urso? Maybe? I, I don't know. I think we'll probably see him as a sub, but I would also be the number of times his name has come up here as we're decoding this press conference. I don't think there's any way that we don't see at least some type of uh, you know cameo appearance from uh, from the new Frenchman for sure. He's got good 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 physical ability. Yes, yeah. Luke. Hey Dean, uh, Hi. Luke, Quinn City Soccer Show. Um, so I'll start off with uh, uh, what we heard yesterday when the rumors were breaking about Enzo was that he may be out for four weeks and that he was also maybe suffering mentally and the team was considering bringing in. Uh, a specialist to help with his mentality. Are there any truth to those rumors? No. <laughs> yeah, there's, that's quite an easy answer. Yeah, no. that's an easy one. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> level up, Luke. You got to love him, dude. Level up, Luke from the Queen City Soccer Show. Uh, big fan of his, big fan of everything he's doing. And uh, he's, it looks like his debut at the press conference, pretty cool. Um, love to give a chance, a uh, coach, a chance to put some rumors to bed. Um, you may have seen some of the, the that four weeks time frame floating. Uh, you may have seen talk of a specialist floating, but that's why we don't do news on social media, folks. We wait to hear from the people who actually know, and we get the goods from them. A contest called the Southern Championship Belt. Are you familiar with this this competition? I am now, so go on. Tell yeah, me more. <laughs> so, uh, learning experience. The learning room so rears its head again. Charlotte, Atlanta, Nashville. I, I want to say Orlando, DC, as well. Uh, so the top head head team gets this fan made Southern Championship belt. Uh, now that it's on your radar, uh, is that sort of a competition something that? Uh, would interest or excite you, or are you, are you just going to stick to the uh, games on the pitch here? No, it interests and it excites me because it's to do with our fans who have been brilliant since they've been here. And, you know, uh, we're here to 
you know, both excite and make our fans proud of us. Um, you know, so uh, if it's to do with them, we'll, we'll do our best to win it. Fantastic. I'd love to hear that. Wow. Is that what we would call the perfect answer? Yes, we want to win every trophy out there to make our fans happy. God, Dino. God, I fucking love it. Um, the fan base has had some criticism for Brecht so far this season uh, in the central kind of attacking role. What have you seen from him and what do you want to see from him moving forward? Good question, Luke. Well, what I have seen from him is an unbelievable ability to be in good positions when we haven't got the ball. Uh, wins the ball back really well. Wins free kicks in high areas of the pitch. Um, you know, what we probably need a little bit more from him is a little bit more creativity in, in the final third. You know, I've spoke to him sometimes about putting the ball, leaving the ball there. And, you know, it's down to the other players then to get on the end of it. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, he, he partly agrees. And it, whenever you talk to footballers about this, it becomes the chicken and the egg. Uh, you know, I could only put the ball if the runs are made. But, you know, <laughs> are you wait for the run or is it the ball? Just put the ball there. And if they don't get there, I'll deal with them. <laughs> that's great uh last question man dino so, just uh, just like i'm gushing it's got to the point we're almost 30 minutes in and i'm just gushing because everything dino says i just love i just or, gobble that stuff up with a giant giant ladle folks uh look at that cheeky grin on his face because he knows he's having he's just holding court now he's just having fun he's hanging out with level up luke and all the crew um i really really agree that I don't know if I've criticized Brecht, but I want to see a little more creativity. But remember, he did have the assist to Yuri Tavarish. He did. Uh, he is doing drawing fouls in the offensive zone. So uh, I don't think it's all bad for Brecht, but we do want to see more. Some goals would uh, uh, from Brechty would really be nice, or just like a bunch of assists. One of Obviously, going to Nashville this weekend, Music City. What are you going to do to keep Scotty Arfield out of the hockey talks? I know he probably wants to play. <laughs> what are you going to do to get me out of the hockey talks? <laughs> oh, but no, uh, not a great yeah, we're looking question, forward man. to the visit, but um, Scotty will just be strumming in his, in his hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so you're cheers. Taking, Thank you. Mike, go ahead. Dean, a lot of, there's been a lot of questions about individuals in terms of the offense and the scoring and Enzo being out, that sort of thing. Overall, are you pleased with what you've seen in terms of the, the shape of your club in the final third, the attacking third, and, and what they're doing, even though you guys have two goals through three games, is that are, are you pleased with the, the foundation of what you guys are trying to do, or are there tweaks that need to be made to, to kind of increase some? I, we're always looking to improve. That's the that's the biggest thing here. And um, you know, tactically, I think we've we've been really good. We need to improve certain things. Um, and as I've said, I've, I've never come here to try and get plaudits. So I'm, I'm too old, too long in the tooth to be wanting plaudits. I'm here to develop players and develop our team. And I think the way the players are working in training, they're certainly doing that. And I think we've controlled, you know, three of the three of the games that we've played for long periods. And that's a credit to the players with how they've been doing. Um, you know, if the penalty should have been awarded as it was at Vancouver and stayed on the pitch and had we converted the first penalty against new you know new york all of a sudden it may have been four goals and you know people don't say so much so you know uh we're getting big chances at the moment more than the opposition are getting against us and if that continues then the points keep coming all right so i don't want to get you know like uh morbid here but you know someday uh, dean smith is not going to go he's going to he's going to pass on like we all do no one lives forever and dean smith's going to be on his deathbed and his family's going to be gathered around and they're going to be like dino we're going to we've loved you thank you for everything you did for us do you have any last words to, of wisdom to impart dino before you give up this mortal coil and pass on to the next plane of existence and dino's going to go they should have called that penalty in Vancouver. <laughs> I mean, I swear this guy's obsessed. All he does is talk about, he's going to be talking about this penalty in Vancouver till the end of time. Uh, I probably think it should have been a penalty. I don't know why um, they overruled it, but uh, there it is. So some things in this world just don't make sense and some things you'll never be able to get over. Ain't that the truth? Um, yeah. You haven't seen your team lose a game yet and react to it. If you go back to preseason, you guys are going to have a good stretch here. Um, what sort of reaction are you expecting or do you want to see from your team this weekend against Nashville? Um, I mean, it's not so much a reaction because I thought we were very unfortunate to lose the game and I thought Toronto were very, very fortunate. And as I said, for 80 minutes, there was just golden silence at their, at their stadium. So, um, which was, you know, 
big ramped up first game of the season for them. So, you know, I'm, it's not a reaction. I just want them to make, make sure they keep improving on each performance because if you do that, you get results. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you. I, I do have a follow to that. Yeah. It's all about Is that it... bounce back. It's all about that bounce back, baby. Oop, it looks like I'm cutting off a follow up. Did not, I never want to cut off a follow up. My bad. Is it an overreaction that you guys are all one and one in the last two and People are displeased with Brecht and they're not happy with Enzo. And I mean, are... I think I think I told you from the moment I came that I won't. Wait, do we secretly suck? Is that is that the question being asked here? We keep performing to our our capabilities. Then I certainly believe we'll win a lot more games than we lose. I mean, it's an overreaction from from the supporters that are. I I haven't seen that to be honest. I mean, I'm, I'm hearing it from from you. Um, <laughs> Uh, from That's you guys, funny. but from That's what I hear, funny. you know, the fans are really happy with how we've been performing so far. Is it an advantage to get? I'm with you, Dino. I'm happy. God damn it. Have a little bit more of a backloaded home schedule. Um, it would be nice to have a, a backloaded home schedule because we've been so strong there. Uh, but listen, we probably should have won all three games um, so far this season. So, you know, to have a return of just one point out of the two games in, in Canada is disappointing because we deserve more. Look good. Uh, so you have uh, more of a reputation on the offensive side. Just an extremely confident Dean Smith. He loves his team, and uh, I, I love the attitude. It's going to... It's going to start to look a little hollow if we can't get the results. But, man, if we can get this win in Nashville, uh, then everyone's going to be like, Dino forever, because he's really just exuding confidence. And he just, you know, I mean, look at that. Look at that fierce determination on his face. Out of the ball, but so far through three games, a lot of the talk has been about the defense. And even the post coaches saying that they know coming into the game, they're going to have trouble getting the ball into the box and creating good opportunities. Is that the sort of reputation you want this team to have this year? And if not, what would you be I, I think you have to build foundations first to be, to allow yourself to be an offensive team. Um, and I think that's what we've done, that's all we've done so far with the players. Give them the foundations of where we want teams to play against us when they have the ball. Um, but then, you know, what are we good at when we win the ball back? Um, I think we've We've created some really good counter-attacking opportunities. We've probably not delivered as better as, as well as we could on them opportunities. Um, you know, when the when the opposition have got behind the ball, I think we've we've been patient and, and drawn them out at times. And our set pieces have got better. So, you know, there's lots of improvements to, to be done. But I, I've been been you know quietly pleased with what we've done so far in a short amount of time. Um, so there is an MLS rule that allows for the reserve team, the Crown Legacy players, to come up for a limited number of games throughout the season. Are there any Crown Legacy players that are on your radar to possibly call up? Um, I will probably tell you on Monday after I've watched them on Sunday. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to watching their first game. I mean, and... let's be honest. I, I'm going to be finding out who Crown Legacy is on Sunday also because I have no clue. I know Brian Romero and maybe a few names I'll recognize from last year, but they have completely turned over their team. So I think the only possible answer to this question might have been Brian Romero, but I do look forward to uh, – let's ask Dean again after after Sunday, after he, he got to the game, which we'll be at, by the way. You know, uh, already wished uh, Jose and the team well. Very good. Cool. Thank All you. Right, let's uh, go to the Zoom here. I know we have two here. So let's go Carol first. Uh, Zoom time. Hey, Dean, how are you? I'm good, Carol. How are you? I'm good. I'm at the beach, so I can't complain. Carol, what That's are you right doing? Some, isn't it? Listen, <laughs> listen. But I Carol, was outside and had. Carol, you're Tifos. You're one of the best guests we've ever had on the show. When you're at the beach, let somebody else cover the press conference, my friend. Enjoy the beach. Come on. The blower going and missed your first uh, answers and just wanted to follow up. So are you saying Enzo might even play this week or is he definitely out um, this no, Saturday? No, there's every chance that he could play if uh, if we feel he's okay. Um, you know, he's got a tight hamstring at the moment. So we'll see, see how he is in the morning. Okay. And uh, Jabril has been back practicing. Is he available? If Enzo, if Enzo has the greatest sleep of his life tonight and wakes up with brand new legs, new brand new hamstrings, then he will be playing against Nashville. But I don't think that that's going to happen. Who, sorry? Jabril, Jabril Diani. Uh, Jabril, yeah. He's been training all week, so he's fit and available for selection. Okay. And there, um, you know. Grant Bronico, I know you mentioned wanting to get him some minutes. Is he at that point yet? 
He's not at the moment. Um, he's probably the fittest player out there, fittest injured player I've seen, uh, to be honest. <laughs> uh, and he's completing really? all the running, but he still just feels feels it ever so slightly if he, he's kicking with his left foot. So I've told him not to do that. Okay, and um, Jerry, Yere, um, I know he has a, a a national team obligation. Is he able to play in Nashville and then go? Yeah, no, he's playing in Nashville and then he's traveling for their their playoff, and we wish him well for that. And Abada, is there any chance? Like, what's the update on his? Love visa that Yerdon's going to be available. Situation? Well, we're, we're still waiting on his visa. He's also got an international next week as well. Um, you know, so but both him and um, Hele, Jelly. <laughs> <laughs> he's both, working both, on it. Uh, we'll be out obviously for the Columbus game. Okay, and um. I think you mentioned, you know, the goal. On Abada, let me just jump in and say, you know, we've been targeting the 30th. He's got the Israel, Israel, Iceland playoff match on the 21st. I think if they, if Israel wins that, I think they got another match on the 26th. I'm pretty sure. So he could play that and still be available against Nashville. Also some question of whether or not he will actually, how many minutes he might actually play with the Israeli team. I've, I've heard differing, I actually have a lot of friends, not a lot, but I have several friends that that are fans of the Israel national team, mostly through from my through my fantasy soccer playing exploits, and a lot of them think he may not actually be a starter for Israel because of their depth and and his lack of playing time recently for Celtic. So we shall see how many minutes he actually logs. It's definitely something to keep watch on. And the other thing to keep watch on in Abada is. Let's say Israel qualifies for the Euros. He's going to be leaving to go play the Euros with Israel. And if they don't qualify for the Euros, if they lose to Iceland, which, you know, sorry, Israelis, I'm cheering for the Icelanders. I just have to. I don't I don't want Abada to miss this for the Euros. But the problem is Israel is also in the uh, Olympics, the Summer Olympics. And so if he doesn't go to the Euros, he may join them for the Olympics, I've heard. So there's a lot going on with Abada's availability this summer, so let's hope he lands and, and makes a huge splash when he gets here. Because Dino's not talking much about it, but it's going to become a bigger issue um, in the coming months based on what the Israeli national team do- achieves and decides to do with their Olympic squad. Goals that could have been scored. I'm thinking about Enzo. If he had if he had taken the PK, if he had gotten the VAR call, he would have two goals probably. Um, and and. You know, I don't know. Do you do you feel like you have to do any, you know, talking to him about his mindset, or do you feel like, hey, you know, no, I, 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 I've now. reassured him that you know I still have he, he still has the full belief in the backing of our dressing room, and that's the, the locker room. That's an important thing for for any player, um, you know. And this game, I've been in it long enough, is sometimes just about very small margins. Um, you know, we could probably f- throw another twenty balls. To Insignia, and he only puts one in that that postage stamp area that he did last week. So you know, that's the kind of things that sometimes happen in football. The old postage Thank stamp. Thank you. Okay, final one. Sam Spencer. Sammy. Hey, coach. Sorry, I can't be there in person. Um, so quickly wanted to ask. Um, you know, all things being equal, you know, help, does a healthy Into Capetti start this weekend? Hey, sorry again, Sam. I missed that. No worries. All things being equal, if if he's completely well and healthy, does a healthy Enzo Capetti start this weekend? Well, it gives him the opportunity, um, but you know, if there's any doubt at all, I won't risk him. That's for sure. Absolutely. Um, Let me tell you something. There's so, there's a little bit of doubt. Obviously, uh, a lot of questions today about uh, you know his status in the fandom. Um, is there is there anybody's performances that have really been sticking out to you that uh, you know have been highlights of the last three games? Um, I think Addy has been outstanding. Um, you know, our goalkeeper, not he hasn't had to make many saves, but just his presence, um, just his communication has been really, really pleasing for me as well. Uh, but the whole team defensively have been excellent. Um, really caused the opposition problems uh, with the ball. They've run out of ideas at times. Um, you know, you, you look at Toronto last week and they ended up putting a lot of, a lot of high balls forward uh, that, that went straight through to our goalkeeper. So defensively, without the ball, we've been excellent. But again, as I've said earlier, the the hardest thing is you know producing them offensive moments that we've been working on. 
And finally, uh, to, to end it on a fun note, um, last year, uh, Mike and I, note. I think, asked uh, some get-to-know-you questions at the end of these every now and then. Uh, and the, today is Pi Day because it's 314, March 14th. Um, do you have a favorite pizza? Pie day. So when you were th thinking pie, I was thinking like a meat pie or a chicken and mushroom <laughs> pie, but then I remembered pizza's a pie. So oh, you know, my like, gosh. Okay. I've lost in translation. Yeah. No, I'm just probably a boring margarita, I suppose. Hey, that, that's still that's still a pie. And, and how about a classic uh, puff pastry English pie? Uh, puff pastry English pie. I think I'd probably go uh, beef and onion. Awesome. Well, cheers and uh, safe sorry. travels to Nashville. Appreciate that, mate. Hi. Red meat for the gaffer. We love it. Uh, beef and onion pie. You heard it here first, folks. So... I don't know. I just got to quickly say that I went to Ireland last summer and the what they were trying to tell me was pizza was just something I would never eat. So uh, <laughs> I'm not going to take a, a UKer's opinion on pizza. Sorry. But I appreciate the question there, Sam. Always love to end it on a fun note and get to know Dino a little bit better. So that's the presser. A little bit of a long one. Hopefully you kind of learned a little something as we went through everything he had to say. It's a lot of kind of treading water. Uh, you know, it's it's one win, one draw, one loss. One shot, one bourbon, one beer. But what I love, the underwriting theme is confidence. Dino is very confident. He's with his players. He's not listening to any outside noise. And that's the way we need to be. So can't wait to for this match in Nashville. So freaking pumped I get to be at this match in Nashville. Season ticket member benefits just keep on giving. Like I said at the beginning, please, if you're, if you're still here watching this now, please just click like. It's just one click, and uh, it'll just warm my heart and... Just give me a beautiful, warm, fuzzy feeling. Thanks, everybody. Uh, if you're coming to the match, find me. I think I'm in section 232. Let's do it. It's for the crown, baby.